NCT's Hei Chan is going to be taking a break from activities as he's currently suffering from tonsillitis. On January 7th, SM Entertainment said he wouldn't be part of NCT 127's third concert Neo City Japan The Unity. Just two days later, on January 9th, they shared that he'd be taking a break because of his poor health. According to the label's explanation, he had to return to South Korea from his schedules in Japan as he'd shown flu symptoms, one of them being a high fever. After visiting medical professionals, he was diagnosed with a severe case of tonsillitis, so the doctors advised him to rest so he can get better, which is why he's taking his hiatus. Based on SM's statement, you would think that Haechin would be taking all the necessary time to recover and heal, but that didn't happen. In fact, on January 11th, he was seen at the airport as NCT 127 were leaving for Jakarta for their concert, scheduled to happen on January 13th and 14th. It is unknown whether he will take part in the concert or not, but it's insane that the hiatus didn't even last for a day before they put him on a plane. He told a reporter that he was feeling better, but considering that he had just been diagnosed with something serious, it's likely that he was supposed to stay on hiatus for longer. We can only hope that the backlash makes the company change their mind and let him actually rest. He deserves that much after everything he's been through. As for the next update on him, let's just say he's in hot waters. One day after his break was announced, NCT 127's official accounts shared a video showing the behind-the-scenes dance practice for their latest comeback, Be There For Me, which they're currently promoting. In the video, you can catch Haechin in the back Background, bringing something to his mouth and inhaling. It's pretty obvious he's using a vape, and even though there's no visible smoke, smokers often do that to avoid bothering others. Even though fans have been mostly joking about it, we can't say that netizens are happy about it. While they tend to be very controlling of idols and are against smoking in general, the criticism mostly stems from the fact that he's smoking indoors, as Korea has strict rules about it. This led to netizens actually filing charges on the basis that he was breaking the law by doing it. After the whole issue blew up, SM Entertainment ended up releasing a statement on January 11th confirming that Haechin had indeed been smoking indoors and not eating a chocolate bar, as fans were insinuating. They also revealed that they received a fine from authorities and would be paying it accordingly. The company apologized for everything, but netizens don't seem to be very forgiving, especially after fans tried to defend him so he can deflect the criticism. A commenter said, Fans should have just stayed silent. How does that look like a chocolate bar? You guys are disgusting for trying to shield an indoor smoker. While smoking indoors is considered rude, the netizens should really focus their attention on SM's disregard for their artists' well-being. It's concerning to see them not care whether they're in condition to promote and attend schedules, and it's even more concerning to think the worst that could happen because of this. TXT's Yeonjun is getting a lot of backlash due to his cover of Temin's hit song Guilty. He performed a cover of the song at the 38th Golden Disc Awards and received mostly positive responses from the internet. A post on the coup managed to get 20,000 views and lots of comments, which were all praising him for the performance. However, Shiny fans have found a lot of problems with his cover. On January 9th, a netizen made a post on Pan Nate titled, Is Hybe Going Too Far? Stealing Temin's Guilty for Yeonjun? The post amassed 80,000 views before it was deleted. The original poster starts off by criticizing TXT fans who have been telling Temin to give the song to Yeonjun. The netizen also accused the company of acting like the song was theirs as they used the hashtag Yonti on the group's official account. The fact that the company had hinted at the cover through a past concept picture for TXT's comeback Eternity only made the fans more furious. The straw that broke the camel's back for Temin fans was that Temin couldn't promote Guilty anywhere, while Yeonjun was performing it on an award show. Because of this, Yeonjun has been receiving a lot of hate from Korean and international fans alike, which has caused his fans to fight back. One fan especially made a post refuting all the points that were made by Shiny fans. They started off by explaining that TXT used cover performances to give spoilers for their next album. This doesn't mean that they were stealing songs or pretending that the songs that they were covering are theirs, they just used the covers to make fans guess the next album. As for Hybe's use of the hashtag Yanti, the original poster argued that companies do this all the time. For example, when Shiny was promoting Hard, he did a TikTok challenge with La Seraphim's Unche and captioned it Eve Psyche and the Bluebeard's Hard Challenge, even though the group's song wasn't anywhere in the video. Temin also did the Guilty Challenge with Hoshi of Seventeen and captioned it Guilty's God, referencing the group's God of Music song. It doesn't mean that they were stealing the songs, it's just that companies use different means of promotions. The fan also expressed frustration about Shiny fans causing trouble for one of Yeonjun's fansite accounts. Said account got suspended simply because the picture they took of Yeonjun gained a lot of attention. Not to mention that it's unreasonable that he's getting hate for the fact that Taemin wasn't allowed to perform the song. Both SM and Taemin were aware of the fact that Yeonjun was going to perform the song and approved it before it was used. Taemin even praised the cover through a message on his bubble, writing, I really wanted to do a solo performance 
performance for the year-end stage or award ceremony, and yesterday Yeonjun helped me fulfill that wish. You don't see Taemin blaming his junior for the fact that he wasn't allowed to perform his song, do you? Yeonjun nailed the cover, so it's frustrating that he's receiving hate just because people enjoyed it. Rise has changed their logo, which has started rumors about how their future might look like, and it's rather gloomy. The group had a comeback on January 5th with Love 119 and is currently in the middle of promoting it. However, it's hard for fans to just pretend that nothing is happening because Sung Han is still on hiatus with no news on whether he will come back someday or not. However, recent updates make us think that it won't happen, at least not anytime soon. Earlier, the group's stuff like phone accessories and stickers had a cue ball design with Rise's name and the number 7 to represent the 7 members. But now, it seems like they have changed the design for the upcoming release as they removed the number 7 from the cue ball, keeping only Rise's name. Apparently, any items with the old design are no longer in their pop-up stores, which has raised a lot of alarms for fans. Some think it hints that Sung Han may not be in the group anymore, while others find hope in the way the number was removed and not replaced with a 6 thinking he might come back later on. Korean netizens who haven't shied away from expressing their dislike of Sung Han commented that the design looked much better without the number. International fans, on the other hand, thought that it was really disgusting of SM to just pretend that Sung Han never existed instead of clearing it up for everyone what had happened to him. It's 2024 and it's time for K-pop agencies to address the issues with their artists properly. Red Velvet's Sulgi's fans are concerned that she might be dealing with a potential stalker. A Pan-Nate user shared worries about a user stalking Sulgi, suggesting the stalker might be a foreigner in Korea, and shared screenshots that revealed that the stalker was using various account names on social media to message her. In comments with Awkward Korean, the stalker advises Sulgi not to interact with male idols like GOT7's Bam Bam and NCT, who are her friends. They express stress and worry, saying that they can tell she's awake because her lights are still on and advising her not to message Bam Bam or NCT before sleeping. In another comment, it seems like the stalker is threatening Sulgi by telling her not to sleep beside anyone else, mentioning that they were in Gangnam and that they'd go to her place as they'd passed it before. This literally means that the stalker not only knows where Sulgi lives, but goes there often. Red Velvet fans have been sending email after email to SM, telling them to increase protection for Sulgi as this deranged person could be a threat to her safety. This could very well be a joke, but SM should still take strong legal action against them and launch an investigation. Things like this are nothing to joke about, especially knowing other instances in which stalkers did horrible acts to people. Jenny has something big in store for us. On January 9th, she posted an Instagram story which said, Have a great session, James plus Jenny. The story was deleted, but fans had already examined the small text on the note, which revealed that she is at LA's Chalice recording studio with none other than James Fauntleroy. In case you don't recognize the name, James Fauntleroy is a singer, songwriter, and record producer who has collaborated with various top artists such as Beyonce, Rihanna, SZA, Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and many others. If you think that Jenny fans are reaching by assuming that it was James Fauntleroy that was in the studio with her, he had also shared a picture from the same studio. It's kind of funny to see the Blackpink members take part in so many projects not long after they left YG Entertainment. We can safely say that the company was holding them back, and now we're about to get great music from all the members.